Hello and welcome to the Xenothesis podcast. My name is Richard Acton and this is episode 14 in which we're covering chapters 7 and 8 from part 3 nursery of book 1 Dawn of Octavia Butler's Xenogenesis trilogy. I'm joined as always by my co-host, or am I? Perhaps I'm just hallucinating him because of some peculiar neuronal stimulation and I've just been talking to myself this whole time. <laughs> Michael Glinka, hello everyone. <laughs> Being connected uh, as last chapter, you know, with an alien connected to my neck, having some weird, I would say, but pleasant experiences. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things get a little um, peculiar in peculiar. this chapter. Well, we call them peculiar, but for Lilith and Joseph, it seems to be nothing but pleasant. Yes, yeah, uh, it sounds uh, like they enjoyed it, but um, <laughs> probably a little weirded out. I honestly, this is like, as you said last time in the last episode, for Joseph, it's just like, you know, Lilith had time to, talk, to touch Daya, you know, it was all the taking time. Ah, mm. Let's get Joseph, you know, touch, have sex, like, what? <laughs> Yeah, he uh, he had a steep curve of introduction <laughs> to the uh, to everything to the pretty much. Yeah. yeah, man, it's it's just so funny. Like uh, the guy is having the time of his life, I think, being awakened and then sex with an alien. <laughs> it sounds like a parody. It literally does sound like some some parody of some sorts. Yeah, I mean, it it does. It, it's an interesting one because it it's the sort of thing that that sounds um, like kind of silly sci-fi stuff. But the what's what's done in like the way it's done in this book is is the the tone manages to remain very kind of I don't know, serious is quite the right word but it doesn't have the it doesn't have quite the same like in a silly sci-fi kind of feel to it yes um, yes it, yeah it's a, it's it's well written in that regard right it doesn't feel like um, I don't know, some weird space opera thing. In my opinion, it doesn't leave this awkwardness when you read some sort of the books, fantasy books, and there's some sort of sex in approaching, right? I mean, some mm. people thrive on it, fully understandable. I mean, you know, they're imagine it, it does wake up your imagination. But here, it's different. It sort of connects that idea of obviously, you know, contact of a human to human contact, which as often happens in you know, if you're in isolation, and this, this whole setup just feels like it's very sort of natural thing to happen. Right, it's not forced mm. and or really weirded out in a way. In some books, they do when the character is like a female appears, and obviously the female throws herself into the protagonist's le legs because he's the protagonist. Right, this doesn't happen here. It's a bit different, and also it connects mm. this idea of like a different sort of idea of alien um, connection with humans. Right, it's it's puts it in a completely, I would say, higher level than just physical. Um, intimacy hmm. and I think yeah. it's very interesting because it does put a perspective on um, things like you know things alien things and how would we approach because I mean obviously the internet is 80 or 90 percent of the internet is porn and out of it percentage <laughs> it is about alien porn let's not be let's not kid ourselves <laughs> we all know what it is um, mm -hmm. but all of it it's often just very humanized type of porn, right? Like, obviously, it's, it has to... But here, it's different. It's There's this essence of, like, connection, right? We'll get to this when we get to the, the chapter. I, I think it, it definitely... Uh, like the Because the author's female, I think that definitely uh, changes this perspective. Going, oh, oh, so yeah, much sci-fi is written by men. And the, the, <laughs> that... that um, yeah, I think that this... You, you, this interesting, unique perspective on, on this uh, this interaction yeah, I think I definitely think, helps from yeah. a, coming from a female lens. I mean, there is a subreddit called Men Writing Women, which basically encompasses what I just described uh, <laughs> of how badly some authors write females and female to male interactions, mm. which is absolutely mm. hilarious to uh, to read. But like mm. in general, I feel like this 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 chapter um although it's very brief on its description just i think it's quite interesting to discuss on the, what how it happens right uh yeah the whole process so let's maybe dive in let's uh, have your your pr predictions and then we'll do the summary sure so i put a simple sentence you know um 
well, two actually, in fact, that Nick Cannon modifies Joseph, which he, it did, and then that Lilith and Joseph have sex via Nikanj with some, some strange connection, the way Nikanj allows them to connect their minds together. Uh, yep, I think you, you nailed that. As I said last time, I was not expecting this chapter. This is something completely abstract. Mm-hmm. I thought there's going to be some sort of drama arising right from it, but I mean, eventually it will, but um, still, it was something different. Were you expecting whether or not um, uh, Lilith and Joseph would sort of uh, uh, physically have sex or whether or not you, were, were you expecting this kind of thing where they don't actually like touch one another and do it all through Nikanj? Was that- I, to be honest, I thought it was going to be like connect both. Like, so it's, well, hmm. what, what I mean is that the, there will be some sort of physicality between Joseph and Lilith. Because, I mean, that's what usually sex is about, right? The physicality. Mm. Um, but then it will be enhanced via Nikanj that basically mm. they, they not only they can feel each other as they would normally feel when having sex, but also um, like being mentally connected, their, their minds being connected via Nikanj to, en- to enhance that sort of feeling and sort of having that in depth. But in, here in the chapter, it's obviously not physical. It's fully... Uh, stimulation of their neuron like nervous system and their minds being connected interesting so i i thought you know i mean lilith that's did say in the last chapter that this is what's gonna happen when uh because she is at the moment not able to have children because she has some contra- sort of natural contraceptive introduced to her yes although i think N- nikanj introduced that right and and her um she thinks to herself that this is the like the way by which she might someday become pregnant, pregnant with yes, an that- other than human child. Um, when she kind of hooks up to Nikanj in the end of the last chapter, so. Uh, but I think it's not going to be just like that. I think it'll be physical, con- you know, physical contact with, let's say, Joseph, or because it seems to be Joseph being her partner. But like, it's going to be physical, but then via Nikanj in a way that Nikanj will control what's happening in their bodies. They're like, they're going to be the mental connection, but as well as the modification of the fertilized oocyte as it, as the process is happening. So Nikanj will modify it to add like the alienness, alien genes to it. Okay. I mm-hmm. think that's why I, I think I imagine it being like that. Yeah. Yeah, the the mechanics of it uh, are uh, <laughs> interesting I'm, to think about. I mean, to be yeah. honest, I it's it's going to be weird. Like you know, it's yeah. I I, I don't know how. I, I mean, Joseph. I mean, to be fair, Joseph throughout the whole thing was unconscious. Well, he was conscious, but under Nikanj's full control. So <laughs> I don't yeah. know how he feels so about that, it. Um, yeah, and I think and Lilith doesn't know how he feels about it. I think as well. It's, it, there's a definite, um, yeah. I mean, it, it's uh, he's kind of being puppeted through this whole thing, which is uh, <laughs> yeah, like I said at the end of the last episode, a bit rapey. Yes, yes, um, yes. It yeah. does feel a bit um, without consent, sort of uh, process. But let's see how. I mean, let's see how it goes with after he wakes up uh, from this. Yes. But- but let's get to the summary, maybe, and then we'll yeah, yeah. discuss this as we go. Getting so, ourselves. chapter seven summary. Um, the last chapter ended up with Lilith joining Nikant and, and Joseph on the bed for some intimate time. And the chapter seven starts with providing us with more insight on what she felt and perceived during that connection between Nikanj and Joseph, or to Joseph via Nikanj. And um, during the intercourse, although I used the word intercourse, it was mostly a mental connection here. Lilith stayed conscious as Nikanj did not want to cheat itself of sensation. Although Joseph was conscious, he was being controlled by Nikanj. And um, surprisingly, what when Lilith was trying to touch, at least grab Joseph's hand, Nikanj was like, no, no, no. Everything needs to go through me. Okay. Hmm. Um, so... She never knew, this is what um, 
Lilith uh, thinks of when as she was as this was happening she never knew whether she was receiving Nikanji's approximation of Joseph a true transmission of what Joseph was feeling or some combination of truth and approximation or just a pleasant fiction and the feeling she was pressing was hard to understand it wasn't like her being just herself but it was a time together as if Joseph was always part of her and in book it's described, Nikan focused on the intensity of their attraction, their union. It left with no other sensation. It seemed itself to vanish, as in Nikan vanished from the perception in that uh, connection. She sensed only Joseph, felt that he was aware only of her. This feeling of delight being in mm. one another continued for a long time throughout noon, evening, dusk and night, not until she got really tired. So this is what like this is pretty much the end of the description of what was happening and um between them. So it was sort of mental connection. And I was just wondering in here, was there like was it the consciousness being connected or was it something just fit, like more physical where their nerves and their pleasure centers in the brain, mostly amygdala and the pleasure center called nucleus acubens, um mm. that were stimulated by Nikanj, or was it actually something more? It, it's it always it seems to me like it's kind of a lower level like sensation type connection. It's, it's not like they're kind of sharing thoughts or sort of more higher level intellectual sort of Lilith's internal narr- like internal monologue is not you know interspersed with with aspects of what Joseph is thinking. Mm, it's just true. more. Um, yeah, it's, it's sort of below the level of, of you know whatever is. Um, one's internal monologue is but but perceptually it sounds like they had this kind of uh, ability to sort of feel what the other person was feeling i see yeah i see your yeah. point because i completely i didn't think about that like internal monologue because there's no sort of they don't converse between each other there's no connection sort of like telepathy mm. conversation it's more of um yeah it's like the the deep sense the whatever the brain is doing expressing whatever the hormones and you know the brain is releasing because of the pleasure being stimulated um they both can feel each other but in some sort of different way like as you know we men cannot sort of understand what females feel during such you know excitation the same goes vice Mm -hmm. versa so it might be that the thing that they are feeling both the male and the female version of being excited, I guess. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think that's a, a distinct possibility. Yeah, and and also just the kind of the the um, more chemical hormonal aspects of their attraction to one another seem to be being enhanced, conveyed through mm. this link. Yeah. yeah, and it's kind of interesting the way that Nikanj is playing this role between them. It seems to sort of. It's just like a bridge. It just it doesn't even do anything. It's like just connection between them. That's it. Yeah, it seems to be. Um, but that sort of uh, what does it describe it as? Like it, it kind of disappears out of the connection and yes. just leaves the two of them. Right. It, it has this kind of uh, being there, but not tra- distance. Yeah, it's yeah. like being there, but not trying to interrupt them at all. Just trying to be in the background while still perceiving mm. what they're both are feeling basically <laughs> oh dear man i honestly last last episode we were talking about um alien cult happening like if you know if if this was actually happening i 100 percent bet people would be like so into it oh yeah definitely yeah this would uh yeah there would definitely be a cult following of this <laughs> oh my goodness like uh, an alien kama sutra yes yeah, and it's kind of. I'm def- I'm curious about what what Nikanj is is kind of what what its role is in all of this because yeah, it seems to like playing the observer here almost. It's sort of it's facilitating, but somehow I, distant. I on the other hand yeah. feel like I understand his role. I wonder what he actually it actually feels, right? Yes. So it it might feel like oh, it's perceiving that what they're both perceiving in the same level, but. Or maybe it's not mm. like it depends on like how its brains were are uh, like the own Kali brains are developed right um whether mm. they have similar areas in their brains to that that responsible for pleasure centers and stuff like that um to also be firing similar or is it just like the perception but I wonder how the own Kali actually feel when mm. you know there's such thing like an intercourse happening 
It certainly seems like it can perceive that, but it sounds like it, it's interested in perceiving an, 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 uh, sort of as unadulterated a version of that connection as it can do, right? Because it doesn't seem to want to like interfere directly or mm-hmm. provide any particular input of itself. It's just it's connecting them and then uh, and experiencing what that uh, does for them. It's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I can't. I don't know if it's in this section, but you know, there's this, and it's been talked about in various points before for not um, considering the uloi as male or female, but as something else entirely. Right? They have a they have another defined uh, role that is, you know, distinct. Yes. From the that binary, so the uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of a. A whole other maybe whole other gender uh, maybe it's um mm. similar for don kali as well because i mean there are male and females in non kali right so mm. when there is an intercourse happening between non kali like the uloi does the same thing it just perceives the um connection as well as guides the i don't know fertilization and modifies the um oocyte or the zygote or whatever it you know the process is uh, that takes place in don kali um it modifies it so it might be just like instead of thinking of it as like a sex it's more like a bridge a connection mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's it it seems to be it's uh yeah its role is the connection uh, element uh, yeah yeah so uh, instead of like thinking of, yeah so instead of like thinking of it as like a third sex it's basically a connection between the two sexes i would say uh, yes, although I suppose it's not. Uh, I think it's it's still worth thinking of it as kind of a, a distinct um, category in that regard. So it's acting as a as a bridge, but it's a you know it's a conscious bridge. So mm, it yes, has its, yes, yes. You know, it would have its own kind of um, impact on that. And I, it, it, you know, it seems like it has some capacity to to filter or manipulate potentially what's going on in that connection. So it might have a role in um, mediating the connection between the the male and the female so that the i don't know, can improve things mm, i guess uh, so uh, it's interesting yeah. <sighs> but you know a whole new uh, leg to add to the a whole sexual new politics world. complication <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, yeah. it's interesting honestly i just it, it would be fascinating to see something like this happening on the earth hmm. um it would lead to another level of. So, given how um, uh, these these chapters are relatively short, we can afford some tangents. So, it's a. Uh, it, I think this sort of thing will become a technical possibility to a certain degree when we do more um, neural interface type stuff. I guess so. I guess so. Eventually, I mean, you know, it, that's where the technology leads us. That eventually the cyber sex will be, you know, rea- reality, right? It's like, you know, I mean, I can sort of imagine it being like the following, where basically via the neural link, as you're saying, the connection that's developed between, or via internet, right? You can feel it and then... I don't know, you either perceive that feeling of touch on another person or you have, I don't know, a mannequin in front of you and when whatever you touch, the other person feels it. Don't know. But it's definitely there that, that eventually this will happen. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes though we're a little unimaginative about what we think about what could be done with the whole um, neural link type technology. So a lot, of, a lot of sci-fi has kind of things like, you know, you have some... Some implants where you have some like perceptual overlays, where you, know, you got like a heads-up display in your vision, or mm-hmm. um, you know, sort of enhanced hearing and stuff. Um, but it seems to me like, um, and I suspect when we start doing kind of visual implants, we, I mean, we might do the heads-up display type stuff where you add some things to kind of the perceptual field by you know, stimulating the um, you know, visual cortex or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think we'll probably also do things like effectively so that uh, like the the visual cortex has a, a fairly direct mapping to the back of your retina right yep. so that there's kind of like there's a 2d sheet of neurons that are stimulated and that kind of represents a like a grid of visual perception that's on your brain and it seems to me like we could uh definitely like replicate that with a 
uh, an additional thing. So you'd end up with not necessarily just like an overlay of on your existing visual field, but you could create a, se a, a separate additional visual field. Mm -hmm. So instead of having just like, you know, your two eyes, you'd have a third perceptual field that would be like a screen. Okay. You know, so instead of, you know, with the way we have it now, we just have two eyes and, and we can only kind of take in like visual stuff through those eyes. And we have this kind of blended visual field because we, you know, the both eyes face forward. We're not even like eyes on the side of a head having to merge two. But I think we'll end up with our ordinary visual field and then another one, which is just, you know, we're aware of it in the same way that, I, you know, our animals that have eyes that look in different directions have like two separate fields of vision. Yes, I, I see what you mean. Yes. Uh... Yeah. So we'll have like another field of vision that's just permanently part of our perceptual apparatus, but it's a screen effectively, but yeah. in our head. Right? Yeah. So it'll just be a little like array of electronics sat on the surface of our visual cortex and we'll have a little screen so we can permanently see you, to uh, be honest, uh, whatever it is we're looking at. To be honest, I feel like one thing I would like to do it's happen, right? Before, I don't know, maybe when, within our lifetimes, is that I would like to perceive the colors or like the, the light spectrum of the light wavelengths are uh, above and beyond hmm. the visible light spectrum. So in the infrared, yeah, infrared, that's always one I've wanted to see. So I would love to see that. How do some animals like the praying mantis, uh, is praying not praying mantis, um, the mantis shrimp, mantis shrimp yes, oh, same, hmm. the word mix up. Yeah, the mantis shrimp that can perceive the a massive range, much higher range of spectrum. Um, than humans so i would like to see that like sort of this perceived so I, I can't remember whether or not the mantis shrimp actually so it has a lot more individual um color sensors like 17 or something different like um light sensitive compounds that can be stimulated in its neurons to, mm -hmm. to get input um i can't remember whether or not that actually results in a higher resolution of the color, ga color gamut i think it, it does and uh, um, but in some ways, it's not quite as good as ours. I forget exactly what the mechanics of that are. Well, but it can definitely see, I think, further into the the, um, the UV. But the other really neat thing that they can do is they can see polarization. Uh -huh. So both linearly and circularly polarized light, they can distinguish the difference, which is particularly useful because they, um, they often try to catch prey which are transparent. Yeah. But the transparency polarizes the light so they can see the difference in the polarization to find their prey. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's that's the thing. Like, for me, I would just see, like to see how... What people don't often realize, I think, is that, you know, when you op turn on your radio or something, right? Uh, I mean, not, who has radios anymore? Usually older people. But anyway, the, radio, the wavelengths, the, the waves are all around you all the time. It's just whether we have a device that can read those wavelengths right? they can you know to or mm. transform them into something that we can perceive i just would like to one day be able to see that mesh or that that mess yeah. or around around us you yeah, know? yeah. I, I i agree yeah step out from that comfort zone of like you know seeing all those colors and everything into that seeing more like more of those mm. things definitely yeah and things like so the ability to see infrared for example uh it would have actually really quite interesting and complex social consequences, right? Because if everyone could see infrared, infrared adds an interesting temporal component to visual perception, right? Because stuff, you know, if you touch something or you sit on a chair or whatever, it gets hot and then remains there for a while after you've left. So it's not, you know, most of vision is sort of instantaneous, right? There's not much, or you know, light speed type stuff. Mm -hmm. there's, there's not a history to it. Whereas infrared confers this kind of historical bit so there's a lot of kind of little little day-to-day -day things like perhaps a you know, little day-to-day -day deceptions or kind of simplifications of narrative that we send to one, say to one another might not be as easy to get away with yes if you can see a little bit of the history of what just happened right if you can see the the heat from something that was just touched or you can see slightly through the the walls to perceive you know the heat signatures of stuff on the other side that has quite substantial social implications i i think where you're heading at with this and my i, I sort of I don't see what you mean i mean this would be incredible sort of advantage for forensic science 
for example. Mm. Uh, but in overall, like all technology in general, because if something is uh, broken, you can see the thermal effect of, you know, like the the, re- the release of heat, for example, from broken capacitors or something like that. So, mm. I, I mean, there's so many applications you could use it yeah, for. Yeah, it'd be super useful. Yeah, so... But yeah, it has a lot of, like, implications for privacy and stuff. Yes, I yeah. think so. So, it'd be yeah. interesting, I see, uh, I think, and... But I still would be quite interested and willing to to be able to see something like that at least at the end oh, yeah, of my life yeah. I'm, I'm not i'm not uh, saying it's not a good idea i'm just saying <laughs> no that, i know uh, I it know. would change the it. social dynamics of, yeah it would really change of, uh, i mean lives. It, this yeah. is what like you know all the cyberpunk theme style of like books and you know ideas come from right that, that hmm. there's this idea that people uh, that humans modify themselves with machines that so that they are more perceptive faster right but uh, so the, the, one of the things that um, superhero narratives often do very poorly in the mainstream is appreciate perceptual powers well enough. Mm-hmm. Right, because a lot of the time, people who have the sort of you know some kind of superhero ability, some superpower in these narratives, they have a perceptual component. Right, they can often see some stuff that, or you know, uh, some ability to perceive something related to the power that that they don't take advantage of nearly as much as they should. Mm. Superman's always ridiculously overpowered, but, you know, he's a good example for this. For the, so, you know, you can take, like, his ability to just sort of, like, see and hear basically everything anywhere is, like, massively underutilized by comparison with his sort of brute strength powers. I think, Whereas yeah, it, yeah. It, it, yeah, no, it's a... Uh, uh, no, especially for, like, humans, right? Hum- we're... we're our information is our medium of warfare, right? It's we intelligence and getting information and the ability to to you know use that as, as leverage and manipulate one another with information is how we do our like conflicts, right? The the brute force stuff is almost kind of incidental as a, like a secondary thing, right? All of it goes on at the level of information for the most part. Yeah, even. Even when you go back to, you know, if you read like Chimpanzee Politics by, by Franz de Waal, right? Even before we were humans, right? Most of the conflict is going on at the level of like politics and information and alliances and stuff. Right? So it's like it, 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 the perceptual powers far more than the brute force of a thing where the leverage can be had. Um, but uh, that rarely comes up in, in most superhero stories. Yeah, I think I see your point because the idea of being able to perceive certain things that other people can't uh, would definitely give you a definite advantage or in some circumstances. And I see, and I see why. But Superman is the problem here because of his ridiculous um, overpowered, just gen- being overpowered in general. So, yeah. and most. Also, if, if if you want to look at somewhere where this is, I think done very well is uh, something I mentioned way back in the first episode. I don't know if I've mentioned it since, but Worm. Um, yeah, Wild Bo's uh, superhero story, where the perceptual elements of people's powers are often the important and determining factor of, of whether or not they uh, uh, do well. Yeah, so I need to still read Warm, but each time I think it, I have to sit down, and there's so many things to read that, especially Warm, <laughs> its, uh, its length is just. Uh, yeah, that's a, it's a serious undertaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I think I will eventually, but oh. yeah, it's 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 worth worth getting to right eventually. But uh, yeah, it, uh, you can take your time with it. I, I think uh, it took me a while to actually <laughs> uh, get all the way through it because uh, uh, when I first started, so the, actually, uh, uh, I I almost finished it before there was an audio book version, which is a massive compliment coming from me <laughs> because I almost never read something that doesn't have a an audio version um yeah i say it was good enough to motivate me to to read all the way through it in in uh in paper well not paper in electronic form Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah (laughs) i I get it (laughs) right should we go back from the tangent yes Uh, (laughs) yeah now to where should we be returning from our tangent Um, well we just the whole exactly where uh, Lilith and Joseph Nikanj finished just basically finishing um, so hmm. the end is it's all this whole situation finished this whole sort of 
intercourse via Nikanj and um, basically ended up with apparently Liv shouting at some point, at, which surprised Nikanj, but ended up with Lilith um, uh, with sore throat, which was healed by Nikanj. Um, all that, and you only screamed once. It told her, how did you let me do even that? She asked. You surprised me. I never made you scream before. This is actually very interesting. So it must have happened before, right? This sort of stimulation of her pleasure senses by Nikanj, right? This mm. is what it implies here, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not... We don't get that much uh, more about... Uh, yeah, this, it's, it's this kind of unstated thing last chapter as well where there was kind of alluded to to past interactions of, of a similar nature yeah which is interesting because you would think like this is what Lilith why Lilith confuses me right all this time she thinks of the Uloi as um the captors well she says to them just I don't know to maybe maybe make the humans that she has awakened to um to follow her guide understand her i don't know to to be on the same page with, uh, with her but at the same time she did benefit and she did things like that with them i don't know it just feels to me a strange uh contradiction in her i don't know if she just ah uh, yeah i mean to, to me it's it, it seems psychologically realistic that that kind of dissonance would be I mean, yes, um, Stockholm syndrome is a yeah. real thing. So, <laughs> yeah, and uh, so yeah, you know, she's in this environment with with no other humans, and she's got these other intelligent beings with which she is necessitated to interact. So, you know, like she she's going to have a you know an acclimatization to that mm-hmm. that's going to be normalized, but she's still going to have these kind of intellectual reservations about whether or not she's selling out the species. Um, and the you know the other kind of thoughts of you know they, they did uh, rescue the species and they are going to put us back on Earth and maybe if we play along we might be able to break away at some point. Yeah. So there's you know the, the kind of justifying and um, concern and a certain amount of legitimate um, optimism for a, a future mutually beneficial relationship between the species. It's in it. So it's a a complicated mix yeah no i understand i understand so this is where nikanj and Lilith discuss this whole situation you know lilith asked nikanj if anything that she felt was made up by it but nikanj tells her that it was all them right it was all what both it was even overwhelming overwhelming for nikanj and um when the Lilith calls out to Joseph, it's we are told that he's just deep, deep asleep. He's not responding because he's deep asleep after all this. He, f- he felt everything I felt, and he kind of goes on se- on the sensory level. Intellectually, he made his interpret interpretations, and you made yours. I wouldn't call them intellectual. You understand me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a certain. Um intellectual aspect you know she was doing that wondering about how much of this is is kind of my experience of of what um actually joseph's Joe's experiencing yeah. and how much of this is what nikanj is, is showing me or inventing um that uh, yeah we don't get really any insight into what joseph is thinking about this at this point so it's um, no not yet so i yeah i, th- I was trying to put ourselves in his head for a second because that's going to be an <laughs> interesting place to occupy in this chapter. I think it'll be quite traumatic, I would even um, say. Yeah, yeah. Because he's, I mean, so that this, if we go back to what, what happened, right? He uh, was in the in this room with, with Lilith. Mm-hmm. And then the weird alien tentacle monster comes through the wall. Um, <laughs> and, you know, Lilith has an argument with it about genetically engineering him so that he doesn't get killed by the other humans both in english and in different language he, he can yeah understand. in in a yeah in a mix of a language that he doesn't understand and then uh it grabs lilith around the neck and she's like don't worry about it's it cool. it's cool it's just cool. showing me what it wants to do to you and he's like do it to <laughs> and me and there's like uh, okay um yeah um i mean i suppose he's 
reasoning that uh, the ability to heal a bit more quickly is probably going to be you know conducive to staying alive given our current situation so i'll and then roll with it and then all of a sudden he's uh initially unconscious and then apparently awoken to be fully controlled kind of... not being able to do anything by it himself because he's controlled by an yeah. alien oh boy so awoken to like some kind of weird version of locked in syndrome where yeah. his body is being puppeted by an alien and he's experiencing sexual pleasure and <laughs> the pleasure of the other part and oh some boy, weird oh neural link thing. Yeah, so so I, I uh, yeah, I, I can't really quite picture what he must be thinking. Oh my god, <laughs> it, it must be really like, yeah, I, I don't know how I feel about this. It's the guy is like, oh, this is alien. Like he's seen the alien for his st- first time in life, and he goes about to touch it, and then he kind of rubs his wrist, and then makes him go unconscious, and then he just goes connects to his nervous system, to his body, and then eventually just goes like, hi, Lilith, they want to join us, and then it's just like, and then he goes through a mind blowing sex with, uh, via alien. Yeah. It's like, I don't know if there's a a definite like strong juxtaposition there because you know he had this as mostly this initially fairly strong kind of revulsion reaction to the to the alien and and uh, although he was able to you know overcome that enough to touch him but like you know, going from that to this other extreme <laughs> is, yeah, yeah i think if i was in his feet i would be like okay that was interesting Never ever fucking do this again to me ever again without my consent. <laughs> yeah, there was there's yeah. a limit of how much a human mind can take in in one go. I agree. Yeah, I think that might be one of the kind of um, you know, the reaction. It, it is sort of so much that you just sort of go right. Um, okay, um, and it sort of detach from, yes. from the situation. It was like a dream. Like, I a can't really, weird really handle dream. this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can I can see him being uh, surprised. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, uh, I know that uh, I, I, eventually there's going to be a chapter that basically, I think one of my predictions of chapter 9, I put that um, there's going to be a conversation between Lilith and Joseph about this, and I'm sure it's going to be like that. Like, mm. okay, I get it. I've experienced that. Don't do that ever again without my consent. Yep. I, I think that's a solid prediction. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's go back to this chapter because it's almost finished. Um, where basically mm. there's, there's something happens after this conversation, you know, with Lilith and Nikanj that Lilith does something surprising. She moves her hand over Nikanj's chest, taking a perverse pleasure in feeling its tentacles squirm and flatten under her hand. And surprise Nikan just what she's doing and making the lift stop, but it says that the touch doesn't bother her it. But then it just jumps out of bed and it's like, okay, I'm bye bye, that was nice. <laughs> nice one one night stand. Uh but just before it leaves, um uh Lilif grabs its hand and asks, Do you like him? The point of focus briefly on Joseph. And the country goes, Arjas and Dichan are mystified, it said. They thought you would choose one of the big dark ones because they are like you. I said you would choose this one because he's like you. And the country tells her mm. that he knew that she would choose him because he's very similar to her. Lily surprised by the insight of Joseph by Nikanj, uh, on Joseph by Nikanj, asks, how does he know him so well? And we are told that Nikanj was looking for someone good for her, someone that no, not on another Paul Titus and it found Joseph and the chapter ends with this conversation you, you choose him for me I offered you one to another the two of you did your own choosing it opened the wall and left her and that's the chapter 8 summary finished yeah yeah, it's interesting so it's, it seems like the uh, uh, the other Owen Carly are still uh, struggling to understand the humans and Nikanj is a little further along in I that think, regard. Um, yeah, I think Nikanj is much, much more like the whole um, uh, situation with Kaguya 
the whole attitude of Kaguya towards Lilith, the whole mm. attitude, uh, the whole situation Paul Titus, the whole attitude of Chitaya towards Lilith. Uh, I think Nikanj was observing all of that, and it it is much more intelligent than all of those other Onkali we've met so far. That it perceives her and understands her Lilith in such a level that um, Lilith doesn't realize it herself. Hmm. It's kind of odd to me that the because uh, Nikonj is explicitly bred for the purpose of this this trade with the humans, yes. right? And they've mentioned that before, and it seems like the other on Kali don't quite give that as much weight as it perhaps should have. Because I mean, uh, I suppose it's tempered by the fact Nikonj was was young initially, but like uh, the fact that you, you know that you've explicitly bred this the Zuloi or the Zuloi in particular mm. for this task seems like you'd kind of put more weight on their thinking about yes. interactions with the humans but no it feels to yeah. me like even though the Onkali have this sort of more collective type of thinking right between the, each other uh, there's still some sort of the prejudice against the age right and lack of experience but it seems that mm. Nikan's intelligence and ability to grasp the situation is much more, I would say, a genius level of maybe of Don Kali, where it learned a lot from the the young on the young Uloi that was couldn't speak English to where it is now, being to understand humans to such a level that it just picked almost I would say not perfect, but they a mate that literally. It un- can understand Lilith to the level that she doesn't even realize. Hmm. Yeah, it, 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 it's definitely very perceptive about human, um, I suppose, hum- human psychology. Mm. I just, I just feel like, from all of the Onkali, um, although initially I was very a big ch- a fan of Chitaya, Nikanj really hmm. grew in my eyes. As yeah. and in general, the attitude when the Paul Titus situation, when he was the only one saying this is a very bad idea because uh, this may happen. And yeah, then, that was definitely a strong point in its favor. And the whole idea of, you know, it supporting uh, Lilith and just in general, just, um, I don't know, it just feels to me... and. As much as that would, I don't know, my, maybe my opinion might be wrong here and many people may not may disagree with this, but I think when it came to all of the aliens, I think if I had a choice to put with who, whether I would, if there's a choice of no aliens or aliens like Nikanj, I would go for the aliens with Nikanj. Because one, you would learn a lot from other things because, you know, this, this is a science mind talking, but I think if aliens like that, you know, took on, came on Earth and gave us the opportunity or choice, right? I would prefer to have some someone something that is able to understand us in such a level. Yeah, yeah. I mean it, it still definitely has some uh some some gaps in its understanding oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. some some uh, you know some uh, very alien ways of of thinking from human perspective, but uh, it it definitely seems to be getting much much closer um than the others. And is improving. Yeah. I mm. yeah yeah. So let's go maybe to my chapter eight predictions and then get to the summary. Of sure. It. So chapter eight predictions were for me were that well, we know that uh, the rest of the humans um, that were awakened by Lilith were waiting for food and which has been risen several times by everyone the last two chapters mm. and so basically my prediction was there's an unrest between the humans as they're just all waiting hungry to get food from Lilith to, to for Lilith to let them open to open the the doors for the where the food is stored for uh, quite a long time actually in fact because we were we are told that the noon evening then the dusk and the night you know passed where, where Lilith was it sounds like it's been almost a full day since they were last fed. Yeah, so it, there must be quite a bit of unrest there. And I thought there would be some fighting again. Uh, physical fighting, I think, that Lilith will have to stand up again. Uh, not just sort of verbal um, 
a session of dominance, but also a physical uh, fight. And I th and the physical okay. thing, I the fighting actually, I was wrong. Uh, there is no. Yeah, at least at least with Lilith, that I, I suppose that there may have been some off screen, as it were, um, mm. in into group conflict. Yeah, mm. there's one thing that really surprised me here in this chapter, but we'll get to it uh, when we get to Tate and her new mate. I would mm. say. So maybe let's start the chapter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. The chapter 8 starts with uh, people silently radiating hostility towards Lilith as she calls them out like a canteen lady calling kids to eat you know, while opening the, the doors to the storage. Uh, and the two best friends of Lilith, I'm being sarcastic here, it's about time, Peter von Weirden. If we were through screwing, that is, Jean Pellerin added. And this is this fun. I personally felt satisfaction is like Lilith looked at Jean, her bruised, swollen face <laughs> after <laughs> sending her mm. a few punches in the face. Um, hmm. And yeah, they're sort of being pretty shitty about all this. You know, they're not not uh, not all happy. To me, I would be grumpy if I would have to wait for food, and I'm a slob yeah. when it comes to I want to eat and I need to eat now. So I would be <laughs> same. Yeah, although it, it seemed like, um, uh, as Nikandra saying that this was kind of a an assertion of Lilith's authority to a degree, right? You know, they're, they're forced to wait. So perhaps this is why there wasn't a direct physical confrontation with her. Mm. Right? It's uh, uh, you know she has the the power to control the food, I mean, and she's just exercised it. That's basically what yeah. wolves do, right? Like the alpha eats first. Mm or alliance, um, the alpha eats first, and then the rest have to wait, and then until it's happy, full, and then the rest of mm. them just go. Or at least someone higher up the, the dominance hierarchy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lilith announces then that she will awaken 10 more people tomorrow, uh, that, and that the already awakened people will help them to acclimatize singly on in pairs. And as she was saying mm -hmm. that, she was opening the comments for people to collect the things they wanted, the food they want. And that's where Gabriel Rinaldi, the actor, starts to complain. It's ridiculous for you to have to do that, Lilith. Make them stay open. But Lilith responds that that's the idea, you know. They have to stay open for two, three minutes, but then they close to replenish or until she touches the door again. If you ask me, the mm -hmm. walls are fixed to, uh, that way to keep us from thinking about what we ought to do to our jailer. A jailer, Peter said. Lil waited, wondering whether anyone would defend her. Which, to be honest, I'm surprised that Tate and Gabriel uh, Tate didn't say anything. But hey, no one said, uh, hmm. said no one did. Though silence spread to other groups, and Lil, in response, go went to his group and just said that you know things can change. He can maybe turn everyone against her, but then everyone would be put to sleep again, and this process would be repeat over and over and over again until they learn to cooperate and shut up. And after that, she just went to join Tate, Gabby, and Leah. And, you know, Tate congratulates her on a long overdue warning. Um, but it won't work because they don't care if they start again. And they care, Gabriel told her. Even with his blue black beard, he was one of the best looking men Lilith had ever seen. And he was still sleeping exclusively with Tate. Although Lilith liked him, she could tell that he did not trust her because she could see his expression when she caught him watching her sometimes. So this is where I'm really confused, still confused about Tate, right? So now hmm. she, we know that Gabriel Rinaldi was the guy who um, confused uh, Onkali, that he was playing, he was the actor and he was playing those different yes. characters. So it's sure that he knows how to play someone he actually isn't. But Lilith notices that mm. he is not certain, like he still doesn't trust her. And yet they act like he acts like on being friends. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a, I think it makes sense as a as a pairing though, Tate and, oh, and, yeah, because they're, and Gabriel, because they're, they're both um, manipulative yes. in some ways. Yeah. yeah, so it it feels to me they, they matched really well each other. But like so mm. I'm really thinking what the hell is Tate and Gabriel like plan, right? Tate's plan obviously was is is unknown, and I'm still very um, worried 
of her. Like, hmm. although Lilith likes her, or at least um, they both um, accept each other. Yeah, I think uh, perhaps like respects her competencies yeah might be a better yeah, way they of, sort of ac- <laughs> i don't know about likes i would say accept yeah. each other right they they accept hmm. each other but i it just feels to me that if anything went wrong it wouldn't be the the you know the peter or whatever those unknown unrelevant people right it would be gabriel and tate that would be the head of the opposing group not even the head they would be like the head in the shadows right you know what i mean because mm. it it okay. just yeah, it's like it feels to me that either what's gonna happen is that they don't believe her, obviously, um, as the mm. as the chapter actually goes and explain. Uh, but when Joseph will come out and actually suddenly his attitude changes that yeah he fully believes her because he must have seen her, something, um, then Gabriel Tate would be like, what did he see that changed his mind? And, well, either just because they had said, you know, Joseph and Lily had sex and they're just basically, that's the reason. Or he actually saw something, mm-hmm. right? So it's, I, I'm still really, I would be very worried of, uh, worry of them if I was Lilith. Hmm. Yeah, it, it, a lot, I think a lot will depend on, on where they uh, where they come down, where they decide to sort of uh, place their uh, uh, the bet yeah. with their allegiances. Yeah, if they, they believe Lilith and think that she's, She's a, a sort of good bet to be on the winning side, as it were. Then they might well be uh, useful and and good f- for her. But at the same time, they'd be very dangerous. As yeah, uh, if they go the other way, it feels to me that this. I I'm really. Uh, I don't like this. I would say it's. It feels to me that they would. I don't know if they're not doing anything, or they're just playing both cards. Right now, both to both groups. Hmm. Uh, but whatever they're doing, it must be. But anyway. Yeah, so they 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 both kind of come off as fairly uh, I don't know dispassionate in that regard, and like I think that their allegiance will be with I don't know, the the side they think's going to win, as it were. They they don't seem like they have a strong loyalty to a particular. Yeah. Uh, but then again, this is what the group. book is actually saying, you know, like hmm. they've made personal ties here, he said to Leah. Think what they have had before. War, chaos, family and friends dead. Then solitary. A jail cell and shit to eat. They care very much, so do you. She turned to face him angrily, mouth uh, already open, but the handsome face seemed to disarm her. She sighed and nodded sadly. For a moment, she seemed to close to tears. How many times can you have everyone taken from you and still have the will to start again, Tate muttered. But Lilith here thinks that shows what she really like. You know, like she would try as many times as possible, right? This is mm. one thing about Lilith, her stubbornness and per- perseverance. She wouldn't give up. Yeah, she has a very resilient character. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, you know, Gabriel thinks that Everyone believes Lilith, but the conversation goes again into a denial from Tate. You no, know, Tate goes like, you know, about the lying. Like, how much of the what she's saying is lying? Is like, Lilith tells them that she may have omitted some things, but it doesn't matter because even though they may believe her now, eventually they will think she lied to them. And you know, as this conversation goes on, Lilith Tate sort of pushes her again. Lilith explodes and tells them again what she has been saying about their captors and whether they are. You know, on the ship and all, all those things they're seeing is real, just need mm-hmm. to accept it. And Tyrovish just stands up, and- you know, goes to get some food for Joseph and leaves the group. But before she leaves, Gabriel throws a joke that she could bring food for him to bed. And the chapter ends with Lilith smiling, you know, truly smiling, thinking that at least with whatever happens, she could talk to those three. Yeah, I think she, um, I know, I'm a. I'm a little concerned for the degree of trust she may be placing in them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. <clears throat> although uh-huh. Leah, as we know, was a bit apprehensive of um, Lilith, but I think she likes her, although she doesn't say much. But Tate and hmm. Gabriel, I think, are the biggest two unknown, two, uh, big, yeah. two, unknown, two big unknowns to actually put the trust in. And 
I agree. Yeah, I I think that uh, Leah's much more likely to be um, uh, loyal. And I think that it's it's in the long run. I mean, unless something, I I think this is what's going to happen in the long run. Eventually, Tate and Gabriel are going to get tired of um, this whole situation, right? It's going to be very uh, like it's it's going to be like this that there will be some unre- vo- un- voices of unrest. People will be like um, going against uh, Lilith. Joseph will spring out and say, "Actually, I fully support her because I saw, and what she says is hundred percent true." And then they'd be like, oh, "Why would we trust you since you're screwing up, screwing with Lilith, right?" And then hmm. Lilith looking at for support from Tate and Gabriel and stuff, they'd be like, "Well, you know, blah blah blah." And this is, you know, like we actually we are not certain whether should we trust you, so you know, hmm. and. So you think they'll kind of undercut her yes, at a crucial yes. moment? Yes, and then yeah. as the moment's going to happen, right, Nikan is just going to open the door and walk in and everybody be like, oh, fuck, right? And then be like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then that that point, Tate and Gabriel will realize that they've placed their bets a bit wrongly, that they've pushed their cards too far too quickly, and they've undermined their understanding or, or at least the relationship with Lilith that although she would be like, okay, okay, I get you, but no, not anymore will they be on the same standing, if you know what I mean. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Yeah, and I would, to yeah. be honest, I like and I would, to be honest, I would be in that, I, I would be very, I mean, to be fair, right, if I would be one of those humans awakened and somebody tells me the aliens, right, and shows the war, uh, you know, we discuss this, right, they can grow mm. the walls and whatever, I'd be like, okay, gotcha, we're uh, in a place where we can't do much, we're basically like in a prison, you seem to be able to, I get the plants, I get the stuff, and it does look like mm. you're saying the truth, I'm still not certain until I see from my own eyes, but I don't know. I would say I would be more complacent, not complacent. Uh, I'll be like, okay, let's see. Like Joseph, right? Uh, let's see what the evidence pr- uh, brings us. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think I, 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 I'd be of the same mind. Right? Like, okay, the, this clearly, uh, you know, this is an unfolding situation and there's a, like, uh, our captors have some set of intentions for us. At the moment, there's not really anything we can do about it. So let's just work to quietly play yeah, along. Work together, you know, try be be the uh, uh, do a bit of the kind of um, maybe even the the sort of gray man type strategy, right? Don't draw attention to yourself. Yeah. Just be quietly competent in the background without doing. You know, don't be the one who's last. Don't be the one who's drawing too much attention yeah. to themselves. Just so I would. I mean you know, that. Be ready. So I would be like, no, I wouldn't be trying to be smart and manipulating anyone because one, I'm not smart enough to yeah. manipulate anyone in the first place uh, <laughs> to any degree. But like, it's just the fact of like, I wouldn't be trying to place my bets on something knowing that you're in captivity and style still try to stir up shit, right? Like, mm. it's like, it makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the smart bet is is waiting for a much better opportunity than any of those that are currently available, right? It's uh, you got to. And I feel like keep your head down until something develops. Yeah, you might actually. Have and I feel like this do. is the point where actually Tate and Gabriel are not as intelligent as they think they are. They yeah. are sort of still questioning everything instead of just shutting their traps up and then um, observing mm. the situation. Just yeah, and. Yeah. Move in and moving along with Lilith in, uh, instead of they still act like, oh, are you sure that you're saying truth? Like as if they're trying to trip her or at least make her say something that doesn't add up to the previous stories so they can have this gotcha yeah. moment. Um, hmm. It's this sort of uh, uh, short-term political cunning, as it were, but it's not really strategic. Yeah. Right. Uh, they they kind of short uh, maybe smart over a, a short time horizon and 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 in a um, perhaps under more ordinary circumstances. But yeah, this is this is a situation where the long game makes more sense, if you ask me. Yeah, I mean, like yeah. it's 
I don't know. I, I get that there will be unrest and people are getting angry and then some idiots like walking around and looking for trouble because they have nothing else to say. So even if you say, stay mm. quiet, right? At some point, one of those fools would go around and is like, and what do you do? You have, you have nothing to say, you know, blah, 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 right? And mm. whatever you say would not, would probably end up in a fight anyway, right? So it's like, oh, yeah. So at, no, it's not. Uh, yeah, I'm not advocating for the sort of completely uh, passive strategy, but rather the uh, avoiding conflict where possible, but not, you know, backing down when that might be an issue. No, no, absolutely. But what I'm saying is that, like, eventually one of the, like, as shown in the chapters, like, things like this happen, people fighting and then, you know, counting down. And, like, I, I, it's just for me, like, mm. I get that you're getting bored and, unre like, restless, but at this point, you have a choice. If you show any sort of weakness to whoever is keeping you here, you will, you're like, you're just like presenting yourself on a silver dish. Hmm. Patience and collecting the facts and observing is the most important thing that you can do at the moment. Agreed. I don't know, like, I don't know how, if I was in such a situation, actual situation, whether I would mentally be able to do what i'm saying now yeah it's it's, it's a, a a bit of a gulf between uh saying something actually experiencing and doing it and actually yeah. doing it yeah yeah the ability to execute on the <laughs> what you actually think is the the but best thing but yeah. i just feel mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. this attitude of um gabriel and tate is really is going to bite in their ass yeah and it feels to me that they will be like you no know, and then when this whole situation when I described earlier is going to happen, they'll be like, oh, Lilith, oh, Lilith, and just, like, trying to butter up to her. But at that point, I'd be like, sorry, guys, you've um, you've mm. made your choice. You've played your cards wrongly here, and you can't really go back. Although, obviously, they'll be useful because I'm sure they have the ability to collect people around them, if you know what I mean. So, Yes, yeah, they both seem like... Um uh somewhat charismatic in their own ways um so yeah i think they will be able to uh, attract followers yeah mm. so let's maybe go through the chapter nine prediction because that was a long time prediction but, hmm. but uh, there was one more thing i just wanted uh -huh. to revisit from your the summary of the last uh -huh. section there um just about lilith um telling them the truth so i think um it, it might have sounded from the summary as though she was kind of admitting that she might have omitted some stuff to them, but I think that wasn't. It was more like the Owen Carly have probably lied to her by omission. She's telling them what she observed, what yeah, she knows. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they, you know, she may well be wrong if they've misled her by not telling her the full truth. Mm, mm. Yes, absolutely. Mm. No, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's not just. Um, yeah, she didn't lie to them. It's just more like there must have been, may have been some omitted information that she's not aware of. Hmm. But you know, it's with those things happen, right? I people just start putting, you know, sharing, like sending blame left and right. It's like, oh, nice, you know, like if you think oh, I wasn't aware of this, and they're like, oh, nice, trying to hmm. shift the blame. It's like I'm not shifting blame. I'm still responsible for what I did, but I, whatever I did could not go any other different because I had not full set of information to work from. Mm. I don't know. It just feels to me like uh, often when the situations appear, it's always like blood boiling, infuriating sort of situations. Like, you know, this is not the truth. And yet people get emotional about things that you, they have no power off over. Right. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's the, um, uh, what do they call it? The, uh, the fundamental attribution error where, um, like mistakes that you make are for reasonable and understandable reasons, um, and the mistakes that other people make are because they're idiots and incompetent, <laughs> right? Yes. It's the because uh, <laughs> you, know, you you don't see what's going on inside their head, right? So when you um you know have a crappy morning and you've you've like run out of coffee, so you couldn't have your morning coffee, and and you've like stubbed your toe on the way out the door, and then you've got a flat on your bike, and you know everything goes wrong. You get to the office and you're a bit snippy. Yeah. Uh, everyone else is like, oh, you're being kind of unpleasant this morning. But you're like, oh, no, I had a really crappy morning. I have a reason to yeah. be unpleasant. 
they don't know yeah. that. It's the yeah. No, I get it. I get no. it. It happens to everyone. <laughs> so, mm. the chapter nine prediction, right? This is where we, as we talk, this is the conversation that Joseph and Lilith are gonna have about what happened, what he experienced, whether he wants or not to experience it ever again, and the next steps they should take from there. As in, like how 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 mm. they will approach this whole situation, you know, telling people how Joseph should behave or how what he should be saying, you know. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That sounds uh, reasonable. Yeah, it definitely does seem like the um, like a, a conversation needs to be had. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> after if uh, they the didn't, that eight. would be really bad in general. Like any mm. unspoken things can rot a relationship very mm. quickly, and especially things like that. Hmm. Uh, okay, yeah, I won't uh, comment yes. any more on the speculation. Yes, yes. Let's <laughs> leave it until the next episode when we, uh, when I read the next two chapters. Yes. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you for listening. We were Xenogenesis. Uh, Xenogenesis? Xenothesis. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I made a yep, mistake. A similar name. Uh, we are Xenothesis. <laughs> you can find all of the uh, recordings on xenothesis.com, all the website that we upload our recording are there. I was Michael Glinka. I was Rich Nixon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>